CSS is a rule-based language. You define rules specifying groups of styles that should be applied to a particular element or group of elements on your web page. For example, I want the main heading on my page to be shown as large red text, or let's change the background color on this page to something else. There are several ways in which you can add CSS to your web pages. More on that later. But for now, know that a CSS rule or style rule describes how an element or group of elements should be displayed. The first step in learning CSS is to get familiar with parts of a rule. As you'll see, they're fairly intuitive to follow. Each rule selects an element and declares how it should look. Take the following example. The H1 is the selector. Selectors are used to determine which HTML element to apply the styles to. This whole entire snippet, everything within the curly braces, is called the declaration block, and it may include one or more style rules. Declarations are the individual style rules and are written using the property value pair. The property is always separated from the value with a colon, and the declaration statement is going to always terminate with a semicolon to indicate that the rule is complete. In this example, color and font size are properties, which refer to the style characteristics to be applied to the element, and the values are specific to that property, and they may vary depending on the property type. When writing CSS, there will be times when adding or removing a space will be part of the syntax requirements. Other times, white space and tab spacing are used just for formatting and readability. For example, it's not required to include any spaces within the declaration blocks, but it is common to use white space for readability, such as writing each declaration on a separate line and tabbing in each declaration so that you can easily see where each declaration block begins and ends. Personally, I recommend that you use the tabbed indentation and separate lines. Your code will look neater and it'll be much easier to locate things once you start creating long documents. Here are some additional formatting tips. You should include one space before the opening brace of declaration blocks for legibility. Place closing braces of declaration blocks on a new line. Include one space after the colon for each declaration. Each declaration should appear on its own line for more accurate error reporting. You should always end all declarations with a semicolon. The last declaration is technically optional, but your code is more error prone without it. You should use lowercase characters when making hex values. Lowercase letters are much easier to discern when scanning a document as they tend to have more unique shapes. Whenever possible, use shorthand hex values. So instead of using 99cccc, we could simply write 9cc. Quote attribute values in selectors. I have an example of this here where I have input type equals text. It is optional in some cases to add the quotes, but it is good practice for consistency. You should avoid specifying units for zero values, so there's no need to write margin zero pixels. You can just write zero. In instances where rule sets include only one declaration, consider removing line breaks for readability and faster editing. Any rule set with multiple declarations, however, should be split onto separate lines. You'll probably start to notice that everybody has personal preferences for how they format their code. As you become more comfortable with CSS and write more, you'll develop your own style too. These are just some guidelines, but just always try to be consistent and use an organizational style that makes sense to you. The majority of CSS is selecting elements and applying styles to them, but we can also add comments to our code, just like we do with HTML. The syntax for comments starts with a slash and an asterisk and closes in the opposite order. You can include any characters you like within the comments, as long as they are contained between the asterisks. 
the browser doesn't read comments, so we can use them to help make our code more easily understandable. For example, you can use comments to leave notes for yourself or for your team. You can also use comments to organize your code blocks. Or you can comment out a line or a block of CSS to hide it from the browser temporarily. This is often used for debugging by temporarily removing different declarations to test an experiment without actually deleting the code. There's a lot to learn in CSS. It is a powerful and flexible way that you can visually control your web pages. Over the next section of our course, we will be diving into a variety of ways in which we can use CSS to build better websites.